No, but you said this is very interesting. It's anti-progressivist in its philosophical origins. What do you mean by progressivist educational philosophy? And, and just as a matter of interest, how might parents identify it? Because I think a lot of parents are confused about what's happening in schools. Yeah, no, that's very true. Um, <clears throat> and I think, you know, a lot of our kids come here because or it's in too many local schools, school. I should say, rather than blanket them all, but in too many schools, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I'd probably say the vast majority of schools are too progressive. Um, there Public are very and few. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, there are very few schools. You have to go against the zeitgeist. Yeah. You have to have made uh, a firm decision to uh, to throw out <laughs> what everyone's telling you to do. And there are a few heads out there who do that, but we are few and far between. And so that's why I say the vast majority, because the teacher training institutions, the general culture in 2022 is one of progressivism. So what do we mean by that? Uh, advice for the parents who are watching is when you go into the classrooms, are the desks grouped together so that the children are facing each other? So we're in a classroom right now here yeah. and the desks are facing the front of the classroom and the teacher would be at the front leading the learning. In other progressive classrooms, the desks are grouped together, and then the idea is that the children are the ones leading the learning, not the teacher. And then the teacher gives them a task which they get on with together, so they're leading the learning together, and the teacher might move amongst the desks, keeping them on task, as opposed to the teacher being at the front, being the figure of authority, and leading that learning. So that's one very obvious way to tell. Then there's just the values stuff, you know, when you read their website, do they talk about tradition? Do they talk about valuing, um, tra tra having traditional values? Uh, or do they say we're very modern? Do they talk a lot about technology? Do they talk about, um, you know, children finding themselves? That's the kind of thing that they might say. They, now it sounds, you think, well, why wouldn't you want a child to find themselves? I, I'm not against that. It's just that's the phrasing that they'll use if look, you're. Really, isn't it? Yeah, so children finding themselves, children, um, you know, being who they want to be, that kind of thing, as opposed to we're more of a traditional outfit where we believe children need to acquire knowledge and skills to succeed at life. <laughs> and we are here to teach them and guide them and lead them and look after them and love them. You know, that, that, that's all under the traditional umbrella. The progressive umbrella is children need to explore for themselves, children need to um, be free to express themselves and to find who they are, as it were. And the thing is, some viewers might listen to that and go, that sounds really great. The problem with progressivism is that it's so seductive because you listen to it and you think, that's what I want as an adult. I want to be free. I want to express myself. I want to find who I am. And that's absolutely fine for an adult. <laughs> The thing is, is that children are not experts and children need guidance. So when you take your four-year-old out to the road, you don't say, here's the road, go find yourself because he'll get squashed by a car. What you do is you hold his hand and you gradually teach him how to cross the road until eventually he's able to do it on his own. And that will take years. It takes years to get a child to the point where he can cross the road on his own because he has to look both ways. He has to have a sense of when the car is going to stop. He then needs to be able to get across the road in a quick and safe manner. There, there are so many skills that are involved there in crossing the road. And I have to say, most parents instinctively know not to just allow their child to be free when it comes to crossing the road. They don't necessarily know that when it comes to the classroom. It's the same with anything. You need children to be habituated and to be drilled in the basics so that they could then build up from that. And you scaffold them the whole time. You're there as their parent or their teacher, constantly scaffolding, helping them get to a point where yes, they are then adults and they are free to be able to succeed and fail and try again and fail again and so on. But unless they've had that, that traditional scaffolding and teaching of knowledge and skills, if that hasn't happened properly because they have been left to child-centered learning where they are leading themselves, they simply won't know as much as the child who's been in the more traditional classroom. I must say, I was just, <clears throat> I could not get over the bond between teacher and student. 
all eyes on the teachers. Mm. The teacher engaging with enormous energy. Yeah. And I was looking for the kid who didn't put their hand up. Yes. When it was time to answer a question or maybe. Yeah. I, I didn't. I couldn't find one. So I, I, I'm a bit. <laughs> well, there are some, but yeah, yes, <laughs> well, yes. I didn't find one today. And it just the dynamics of it were extraordinary.